All right, so now we're recording. All right, so welcome, ladies. Thank you for fitting this into your schedule today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about vendor events, and um, I'm going to talk about a little bit how to find them, what you should pack, how you should set them up, how to talk to people at the events, um, then talk about following up, other special promotions and giveaways and things you can do at your booths. Um, so feel free to ask questions as you go. Heather's hey guys, Heather's on. Hi, Heather. We just started. Welcome. We were hoping that you were joining. Just not on via web. Just That's on okay. my phone. That's okay. I was only doing the video in case um, in case there's anything you guys wanted to see that I need to share my screen. I figured I would do that. Um, but I think most of it we won't really need that. And I'm recording it, so if there is something, you guys can see it later. Okay, so let's start with how to find vendor events. Um, Leslie, you said you have a couple uh, lined up. How did you find those? Facebook. Awesome. Facebook is a great resource. Um, there is a page called, it's like Vendor Events and Swaps or something of Wisconsin. Um, it's a great page. If you need the link to it. I think I put it in the pinned post on the Rockstar group. Um, otherwise, send me a message. Send me. Um, but that's a really great post talk. Otherwise, think about churches, community centers, other places, uh, local speakers, your chamber of commerce, uh, if you have any like fairs or festivals coming up in your town. Um, think about networking with other people in other direct sales companies or local crafters, things like that, okay? Um, especially this time of year, there are tons and tons and tons of holiday shopping events and bazaars and open houses and things like that coming up. Um, so just kind of be purposefully looking for them. And when you hear that, you know, there's a church festival coming up, you can call up the church and say, hey, you know, could I come and set up a table and, you know, donate some commission to your church or, you know, donate some products to your church or something. And it's just, it's a really great way to get out in the community and meet some more people. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can start your own. Uh, and then this works out especially well after you have done a couple of events and you kind of know what to expect. Um, and you meet some other vendors in other companies, like make friends, network, make friends with people with other companies because they're going to hear about events. And if you are their go-to pampered chef girl, you know, they'll give you a heads up and say, Hey, I've got an event going on. Um, or I got an event I signed up for, you should join. And don't be afraid to ask other people and just say, Hey, you know, I know you are with whatever company in this area. Are you doing any events this fall? And if so, what and where, you know, could you, forward me some information. Um, so don't be afraid just to ask. Just go out and look and ask around, okay? Um, so when you do find vendor events, if it fits in your schedule and you wanna do it, I highly recommend registering right away, okay? Because a lot of them will fill up really fast and you wanna be the Pampered Chef person there. Um, now the other thing that's really nice about a lot of these events, what people will do is once you are in for the event, if it's a recurring event, very often they will give you first dibs at the next event, which is nice. So jump on that right away um, so that you can take advantage of that again. All right. I do vendor events year round. A lot of people do, Sonia does a ton of them. If you have other questions about vendor events, she does lots and lots. She's a very good resource to ask. Um, otherwise there are some people that really only do them during the holiday season because there are so many of these, um, but there's nothing wrong with doing them year round. Um, your vendor event is basically your way to get out and meet new people, get new contacts and get out of your circle and let people in the community know that you are here, you have Pampered Chef. Okay. Uh, so some things that you might pack, uh, depending on the venue and what's available, you may need a table. I have a six foot table, the legs fold in, it folds in half, I throw it in the back of my car. I got it at ShopGo for like $35. It's a tax deduction because I needed it for work. Okay, watch for them to go on sale, Costco has them. Um, but I would, it's not a bad idea to have one of those on hand and some of you guys might already have one in your garage. Um, a tablecloth, if you don't have a pretty pampered chef one, just get a nice looking tablecloth, something that's not gonna show dirt and hair if it's, you know, if you have pets or if it's in the back of your car. Um, something that's maybe pretty and attracts attention, but not too crazy that it takes away from the products on your table. Um, 
those kinds of things. Otherwise, for those of you who are more local, I do have one with the Pampered Chef logo on it. And as long as I'm not using it for an event, you are welcome to borrow it. Okay, I've got a few different things you guys can borrow anytime. Like I said, as long as, as, long as you come and get it and bring it back and I don't need it for an event at the same time, you're welcome to borrow it. Um, but you wanna make sure you pack some paperwork. Always be ready for anything. So host packets, because your, your goal is to, host, is to book shows, right? Right at the event, whether they're virtual parties, cooking parties, whatever they are, you wanna have host packets on hand. So you can say, you know, great Leslie, I'm so excited for your show. Here you go, here's a packet with catalogs, with information about hosting, um, party planners, maybe a recipe card, whatever the case may be. Um, and I would write in there or on there somewhere the date and time for their party because they are likely not writing it down. Um, they might put in their phone or something, but I would write it right on their packet as well. So make sure you have pens. Okay. Bring your calendar so you know when your open dates are. Make sure your, your calendar is all ready to go. You know when your open dates are now through the end of the year. Um, of course, we like to book, we call it book in close. We like to book parties as soon as possible because then that will help fuel the next parties and the next parties, right? Um, but you will have people that say, you know what? I'd really like to have a party after Thanksgiving. And there is no harm in getting that show on the calendar right away. In fact, I encourage you to do so, all right? Um, but I don't share customer specials uh, past the month customer and guest specials. I don't share them past the month that I really need to book. Now, if somebody, you know, we really can't find a September date that works. Yes, I will share October dates with them. But in a general advertisement, um, I only share the ones I need to book. All right, door price slips. Door price slips are very important uh, for a couple of reasons. But the main reason is that this is what you're going to use to write down your customer information. And some people do some different things with them. Some people do a drawing right at their, at their booth and they gather as much information from as many people as possible. And some people, the way I like to do it, is I hold the door price slips and after I've talked to somebody in person and built a relationship with them, I ask them for their information. So I may go home with fewer door price slips than other people, but those are people that I've actually talked to that may actually want to hear from me again, not just people who are hoping to win a prize. So I go for the quality over quantity deal. And that comes in and it's especially important when it comes to following up with them. And we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so of course, pens, some catalogs. Now this is a really great time um, in the transition between this current catalog and the new one. If you have old catalogs, do not get rid of them, okay? Make little like address label stickers or something that says something like contact me for a new catalog and put it on the front. And hand out those old ones at vendor events because you'll have people walk by and just say, oh, can I have a catalog to take with, right? And catalogs are not the cheapest thing in the world. So I don't want you guys to be buying tons and tons of catalogs that you just give away you know, when you give them out in host packets and things, of course, we love people that have catalogs to share. But when someone just walks by and says, oh, yeah, I'd just like to take a catalog with me, hand them one of the old ones and say, hey, you know, this catalog just retired, but most of the products we offer are in here. If you have some of the new fall minis, the little mini catalogs, that's great to hand them one of those as well and just say, you know, here's our new products that are coming up. Catalogs are a lot cheaper than you handing out full-size catalogs. And plus it's a good way to get rid of some of those old ones uh, if you have any that are left over, okay? Order forms, make sure you have a stack of order forms. Uh, we'll talk in, I'll get to it in a little bit about some uh, incentives you can offer people for purchasing. Uh, logo wear, it's really great to advertise Pampered Chef. If you have a name tag, wear it. If you have you know, a t-shirt or something, wear it. All of you have something because you all have your apron. And you know what? Wearing your apron at a vendor event, it makes you look professional and it makes you stand out because a lot of people are not wearing aprons. So wearing your apron is a perfect thing to wear, uh, to have some logo wear on, okay? Wear comfortable shoes um, because I recommend not sitting at vendor events. Okay, you want to stand 
you want to be in front of your table and standing talking to people uh, so be sure that you have comfortable shoes on we'll get to that in a minute as well uh, some other things you might want to pack if you have some of those like wooden crates um, craft stores and things if you have some of those those are great for like setting up on your display to create some dimension some 3d effect um, plus it just kind of makes it look nice gives it a little style um, if you have like a little flip folder or a flip binder that you can put some of the specials in uh, some things that are coming up I can go grab mine in a couple of minutes and show you if you would like um, but that's great to have all the specials handy or like an iPad or a tablet that you can have you know maybe an album in your your photo album uh, your photos where you have an album with just the flyers of the specials coming up or some other important flyers just have screenshots there so you can just flip through right quick and have those handy when you're talking to people um, I usually throw like a power strip or an extension cord in the box just in case you need to plug in said tablet or phone or something and there's not an outlet close by. Um, I do have a little cart that I use for taking products in and out of vendor events because I do a lot of them. I invested in that. Definitely not something you need, um, but something to think about. If you have any signage that you want to put up, maybe, and it can be as simple as like printing off the current special and putting in a picture frame and setting it up, or the new kits and put it in a picture frame, or they make those, you know, plastic signs that you see, like the doctor's office or something showing, um, you know, whatever little signs. So if you have any of those kinds of things to get some information out there, they're a little bit eye catching, uh, those, are, those are helpful. Um, and then you want to pack your products let's not forget about products now you don't want to pack your entire kitchen because that will be a lot especially for people like nicole who have the whole catalog i know her <laughs> right yeah see um so and then but then there's also you know some of you guys that are newer that don't have everything so you're wondering what do i pack all right uh, for those of you who are newer and maybe only have the kit the kit is a great thing like if you bring just what's in the kit that's an amazing display. And look at the, the pictures in the new catalog, look at the pictures on the flyers. Like they, they show you ways to lay it out and make it look nice. But the kit has a great array of products from you know, cookware to stoneware to gadgets to tools to, use, to essentials. It's a really great uh, display that gives you a lot of variety, okay? So bringing just a kit is awesome. Uh, but some other ideas, maybe you want to um, focus on a particular theme show that you like to do. So maybe there is um, a set of products that you use for that particular theme show. Like when I do a ladies night vendor event, we talk a lot about wine, cheese, and chocolate night or fajitas and margaritas. So maybe I'll set up something that would advertise that. Okay. Um, or maybe you want to look at seasonal products. You know, as we're getting right now, it's back to school. So maybe a bunch of, you know, kid friendly things or things to help get really quick and easy meals on the table for busy families. In a month or two, maybe you'll have all the holiday products there. Get out your baking items for holiday baking, cookies, cakes, treats, those kinds of things. Um, but power tools are things I would definitely have at least a couple of power tools, whatever you're super passionate about and you can use as a great conversation starter. So for me, there's always at least one rock crock on the table. Hopefully you all know how much I love my rock crocks. All right. Um, but the grill pan is another great one. And especially with that nice, heavy cast iron press, people love looking at that and playing with that. Or the deep covered baker. If you have one of those and you love your deep covered baker, bring that. Um, the cool and serve trays, I take those to summer vendor events because a lot of people are outside doing picnics. Uh, but they're also great for people that have, you know, holiday potlucks and they might take things like deviled eggs. Um, There's something else that I was thinking and it just left me. Oh, the manual food processor. That's another great power tool people love seeing. Okay. Um, or you could focus on the new products. You know, maybe, you know, maybe for me, I'll do an event where it's like what I've seen before or it's a repeat event. And so I might make sure that I bring all the new products with, right? Um, now that being said, I would not bring the kit and seasonal items and power tools and the new products. You kind of have to pick and choose because you don't want your table to look like somebody just dumped a giant box on there and it's just too much and gets overwhelming. Okay. Um, oh, things that are on special, you might bring things that are on special to really promote 
Um, like August is the rock crack casserole. So at August events, I would bring that rock crack casserole and really talk it up and get bookings for that. Um, but there is, I, I think I added all of you guys to the, uh, the vendor event group on Facebook. And there's tons of really great pictures of setups that are way prettier than I can ever make because I have no creative mind whatsoever. Um, but definitely look through there. You can get an idea of, you know, how they set things up, what kind of products people bring, you know, what you think looks nice, maybe what you don't like the looks of, um, but definitely look through there. Okay. Uh, so when you're at your event and you're actually setting up, usually at a vendor event, you have like a little square section to work with, right? I always put the table at the back. Okay. I put the table at the back. I set up my display and I stand in front of it. All right. Think about when you go to these kinds of a of things. If you have someone that's out there and looks open, you know, standing tall and their arms are out and they're welcoming you and chatting with you, you're more likely to talk to them. But if you go up to one where the person is just sitting slouching behind their table staring down at their phone, you're not going to go and approach them and talk to them at all, right? So keep that in mind when you set up. Even if the, if the venue provides chairs for me, I use that chair to put my purse on. I never, ever, ever sit down. Okay. I always stay standing. So again, comfy shoes. All right. Um, as people walk by, just be friendly, be open Just say, hello, how are you today? It sounds silly, but you know, just start with a hello and you'll be able to tell there's going to be people you're going to hear them. Keep your ears open. They're going to say, Ooh, pampered chef. I love pampered chef. Jump in. When somebody says that to her friend, she goes, Oh, I love pampered chef. Say me too. What's your favorite product? When's the last time you were at a party? You know, make it about them right away, okay? And she might say, oh, that meat chopper thingy is my favorite. Oh, the mix and chop. Yes, I love it. You know, I have one right here. Um, and then you can kind of, uh, you know, I always ask, when's the last time you went to a show? Because that gives me an idea of what's new since they've been there. So if someone says, oh, man, I haven't been to a party in like 10 years. Great. Let me show you this brand new rock crack. Have you even heard about it? No, what's that? You know, and then great segue into talking about that key product. Okay. You can segue into whatever product you want to talk about, whatever product you want to sell or get bookings for. Um, just be ready for that. Okay. So definitely think about your body language. Like I said, fall, don't cross your arms, smile, be happy. All right. Um, other conversation starters asking their favorite product when last time they went to the show or a show was. Um, cooking they do, you know, are they a baker? Um, if you see them with a lot of kids, you know, ask them if they're busy mom with, with a lot of sports and things. Um, there's lots of different things you can ask just to kind of start those conversations. And then as, as you go, and as you're building this relationship, it's very easy to say, you know what, I would love to follow up with you later. Would you mind if I grab your information real quick? Pull out your door prize slip and ask them to fill it out. Um, you can also, for anybody who says they'd like to take a catalog or a mini catalog or whatever, that's a really great time to say, yeah, I'd love to give you this catalog. Could you just fill out this slip for me quick so I can follow up with you? And you're kind of saying, in order to take a catalog, you just need to fill this out. Um, and most people will be more than happy to do that, okay? If somebody really doesn't want to give you their info, then that's probably someone that you really don't need their info from anyway, because even if you do call them, it doesn't sound like they're really going to answer and be responsive. So don't take it personally, just move on to the next person. When you have all these door price slips, um, I always make notes on the back. And sometimes I tell them, because someone will say, oh, I need help with a replacement part or a warranty issue or whatever. And sometimes I'll say, I'm going to just write a note on the back of your door price slip so I don't forget. Okay. And I write it on there. Other times, I wait until they turn and walk away and I write something on there. I might, you know, write down, oh, um, son plays football, took a couple of freezer meals, or was really excited about the kit, took home some business information, okay? Oh, that's the other thing to pack, stuff for recruiters, uh, recruiting. Either some of those um, Life Tastes Good booklets or put together, you know, have some flyers about the kit, something, have something. Um, because a lot, a lot of people, this is the time of year that they look for holiday jobs and a lot of people end up going and getting a retail job through the holidays. And as you know, we can offer them something where they're making more than if they work in retail 
but working a lot less and spending more time with their family. Okay, mm -hmm. so keep that in mind as well. Um, so following up, I would follow up with them within 24 hours, 48 hours max. Like people are excited, they just met you, you just had this great conversation. You don't wanna forget details about them, you don't want them to forget about you, okay? Plus it, it shows that you really care about someone as a customer if you call them right away, okay? So 24 to 48 hours, give every single person the call, even if you end up leaving a, a voicemail. Um, but just make sure you have excitement in your voice and just say, you know, hey, Nicole, it was so nice to meet you at the event yesterday. It was so nice to meet your kids. I can't wait to share more with you about the new catalog coming out in September. What, you know, whatever you guys were talking about, okay? So that's your basics. Um, some special things you can do at your booths. This is your business, so you can run it however you would like. Um, some people choose to do a giveaway. Sometimes they give away a gift certificate that would then only be redeemable through you, right? And you can print one off um, if you need um, an outline for that, like a template, let me know. There's a few out there. Um, maybe you have a product that you're giving away. Maybe you're giving away extra products at your show. You know, say, hey, when you host with me, you'll you know, get an extra $10 in free product just for being a host or something. Uh, maybe you'll offer to give away a party, meaning you bring all the food. And of course, you get to choose the menu, so it can be a fairly inexpensive menu. Um, but maybe that will be something you give away. You don't have to do a giveaway at your booth but you certainly can. And you can then use that as an enticement to say, hey, I'm giving X, Y, or Z away. Would you like to fill out this, this prize slip to be entered into the drawing? And if that makes it more comfortable for you to ask for some of that information, then go for it, okay? Uh, you could also do like a guessing game. Like you've seen what we've been doing on all the virtual parties. You fill your water bottle with, Claire did one with spoons, or you could fill the make and take mason jar with M&Ms or whatever. You could do something like that and say, you know, whoever's closest without going over will win whatever. So fill out your door price slip, put your guests on the front and, and put it in here. And when you have something to put door price slips in, I always put them in like the rock crack, put them in a Pampered Chef product because it's already there anyway, might as well. Um, so having something interactive like that at your booth might be something you want to think about. And uh, sales, you might say, you know what, I am, today I am offering free shipping with every order of $75 or more. $75, they also get a free gift. And that's then a big enough order that, you know, it's easier to justify eating the cost of the shipping because that would come out of your pocket. Um, if it's a local event, you could say, hey, you know, I, I am offering free shipping for anyone who wants to come pick up the items from my house then you can combine orders and only pay shipping once and then have people come and pick it up from you or a meeting spot that you decide on so that it's not inconvenient for you. You're not driving all over town. Um, you can bring a hundred dollar basket. It's something I bring to my shows, but it's just a basket with a bunch of little tools and gadgets or cookbooks. Um, for those of you who are newer, you may not have some of those things quite yet. Um, but you can host a party and use your free rewards to get things like, Pairing knives, Twixit clips, citrus peelers, season's best cookbooks, okay? So those kinds of little things. I get a lot of stuff from the outlet. My son, Nolan, Nolan orders stuff all the time. There's a rub in there for 80 cents right now. It's perfect. Um, but if it convinces somebody to take their order from $75 to $100, I'm happy to give them an 80 cent rub, right? Okay, because it really helps you a lot. So having a $100 basket available at your booth might be something you want to think about as well. Um, I don't always take my basket to the booths, um, but I do take it to every party. So if you need more info on that, let me know as well. I'm trying to keep it short since you guys are on lunch breaks, so I'm going really fast. I apologize. Um, but the other thing to think about is if you have multiple people at your booth, which I do recommend, I recommend having two people at every vendor event. Now, if you know it's going to be smaller, then you probably only want or need one. Um, or if you're the only one in your area or if you're feeling extra greedy, I do plenty of them just by myself because I'm greedy. Um, but I do a lot of them with somebody else. And what's nice is that you have somebody else to help answer questions, bounce ideas off of, make conversation with, learn from. Um, the first many, many booths I did, I did with somebody else on the team and I learned so much from them, okay? Um, and then as people approach the, your booth to talk with you, 
we just kind of take turns, you know, all right, I kind of talked to the last person, I'll kind of let Leslie step up, you know, and she can talk to the next person. Um, and I know Leslie, for your event, I know you want to book primarily virtual parties because you're traveling a distance down. So maybe that's something that you and Heather would chat about and just kind of tag team in. And when someone says, oh yeah, virtual party sounds great. Heather might say, hey, Leslie's doing a bunch of those right now. And then you might say, when someone says, oh, wine, cheese, and chocolate sounds great, you might say, hey, Heather is doing a bunch of those right now. You know, you guys can work together as a team. Um, but then in general, we kind of take home the contacts of people that we talked to that we worked with. Um, and so if you, are, if you are doing a drawing or something, you guys could say, hey, we're doing one drawing amongst everybody that stops by. That kind of makes it easier instead of having two different drawings. Um, I mean, you could each draw one customer from your own pile. Or you could just put them all in one big pot and pull one person out of everybody that stopped by. And if you do that, I would make sure you put like an L or an H in the top corner of your door price slips so that you know whose was whose at the end of the day when you go to split them up. Because you are gonna forget their names and that's okay. That's why we write notes, okay? So really there's a lot of different things you can do with your vendor event. Um, but my biggest advice would be to just have your paperwork there, be ready, look professional, and bring you know an assortment of products that you're excited about that you can talk about and that you can use as conversation starters with people and really show off to help you um, help you fill your calendars. And look at that, under a half hour, perfect. Do you guys have any questions? Like I said, I know it was fast, but I'm recording so you can rewatch or re-listen later. Um, in case you were trying to take notes. Do you have any questions for me? Did it help you maybe feel a little bit better? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Good, good, good. That's what I was hoping. And the first, the first event or two that you do always just seem intimidating because you don't know what to expect. And that's okay. Um, you'll be fine. It's just like a cooking show. You get, you get better at it. Um, but especially if you have um, a little bit of downtime or if you get set up before everybody else, before the event starts, I would recommend that. Get everything set up at least a little while before the event starts. Grab some business cards, walk around, introduce yourself to the other vendors. And, you know, it's totally okay to say, hey, this is my first vendor event. Do you have uh, one great tip that I should think about today? You know, start a conversation with those other people. Grab their business cards. Like I said, those are people that if you make friends with them and network with them, they will, you know, maybe help you find other shows to do um, in the future. What else do you guys need to know? Uh, Leslie and Heather, the one on the 17th, I will hopefully be able to come down and meet you guys and at least help you guys get set up. Um, and we can talk about that later. Nicole, is, okay. is yours also the 17th, Nicole? Yes. Okay. Yep. And Lynn has done a bunch of them. Um, so I'll let you guys work out who's going to bring what. Okay. That's the other thing is if, uh, you know, you guys are working with somebody else, um, you could decide, you know, to each bring half of your display. Uh, I would each bring your own paperwork because, you know, it's going to have your name and everything on it. So just mm -hmm. plan to bring your own paperwork. But sometimes one person says, you know what, I'll just bring the display because it's easier. Sometimes, you know, split it up and one person will say, okay, I'll bring all the new stuff. You bring these power tools. You just kind of have to talk to the people that you're doing booths with. So... All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll let you guys uh, go finish your lunches or get back to your day. Thanks, Rachel. Hey, you're very welcome. Yep, yep thanks, Rachel. You're very welcome. If you think of anything else, uh, just holler, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Great. Have thanks. a nice day, guys. Thank you.